there's a certain weight that you like to maintain walking around at. Is it, is, are, you, are you getting under that? No, no, I, I stay between like 180 and 185. So making 170 is just so easy. I can take fight short notes. There's actually a fight in Brooklyn that, that dropped out. And, uh, and I, I kind of threw my, my name in the hat for it. It just didn't work out, uh, just uh, New York commission-wise. But, That's uh, a but tough no. place to, to sneak yes, one in on. Yes, it is. You got it. Yeah. So. Is, is there, I mean, have, has it ever crossed your mind to fight at 155? You know what? So, like, right now I'm in, I'm in good shape. I'm relatively lean, uh, 30 pounds away. Even if I lost 15 pounds of fat, I'd be skin and bones, and then I still got to lose 15 more pounds of water. That's just too much. It'd be a terrible lifestyle, and I'd lose my, my, my strength and speed. I already have a welter, so no, I, I don't think that could happen. And I think, uh, you know, when you when you see a guy like TJ, what happened to him, it, I mean... You don't take shots I, well. I think eventually we're going to see less and less of guys cutting major weight. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a particular fan. I don't dislike the guy, but Michael Chiesa moved from 55 to welterweight and just, uh, you know, mauled Carlos Condit, and he was the heavier fighter the night of the fight. You know, yeah. 55 and fighting a welterweight, being the heavier guy, you know, so... I, mean, I hope Dust, see Dustin that Poirier started to find real success yeah. when he moved up. I yeah. mean, I, I think there's a lot of these guys once they once they move up that weight class, it, it's, it's just so much easier. Dude, our righteous welter uh, middleweight champion in Robert Whitaker went from welterweight with mixed success now to 85 and is crushing all the best dudes on the right. planet. You know, yeah, I hope to see that. You know, then you got Donald Cerrone fought at 55, did well at 70, down to 55, doing well too. You know, s some guys can make it work. I'll tell you, I have fought some ogres at 170, though. Thankfully, I'm quicker than him, though, so that, that plays right. off a little bit. You know, Zach Hinson coming out of a elite MMA. You know, Trevin, Trevin Giles, Giles. You know, Giles, yeah. Fights out of that gym. Just finished the police academy, and uh, and hopefully he'll be fighting soon. You know, he, he made it to the UFC. He's 2-0 with two finishes at a fun weight class in, in middleweight, 185. I, I hope we get fight news from him soon, and I would love to, to cross train with him as well. You know, it's, it's good to, to rep Houston and keep the scene strong. Another guy from the Houston scene that we forgot about who's made it to the UFC, Justin Ledette. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm Justin Ledette. Sorry for, for not mentioning you earlier. Yeah, another fun guy. You know, heavyweight with just the sharpest jab. That jab goes so far in MMA. It, it, he uh, lost, lost his first fight, and it was it, he just got dominated. But that's a guy who, he's got a very unique skill set. And I think maybe now guys are starting to adjust to what he does well and they're going to work their way around it. But he's a guy who's got a, he's got a lot of physical gifts. Yeah. Uh, I think that he's, he's going to find some more success. And that's another guy who dropped down from heavyweight to 205. Oh, see, I didn't know and that. And then okay. ran into, that's where his first loss happened oh, was at man. 205. Yeah, and, and to be fair, the guy he fought was also just a, a monster. And I didn't know the guy until I saw him fight, you know, Justin. And uh, now we know. Different. Yeah, that guy was solid. I, I remember he just, yeah, that, that that guy's grappling was just phenomenal, and his ground and pound was even better than that. And you know, Lede, to his credit, stayed in that fight the whole time. You know, we got, we got Chris Salis fighting out of four ounce. You know, a, a, another, you know. Arguably the, the most well-known mixed martial arts gym in Houston. They put out so many fighters. You know, really the, the first guy going in was uh, Daniel Pineda. And, and he's, I, don't, I still think he doesn't know how much I personally looked up to him, you know, as he made it to the UFC. And he's still, you know, he, he fought Fury main event last, the last Fury show, the Black Tie Night, and just made Dominated. such quick work. Daniel's in that weird spot where he just creams and crushes local competition and needs to be on that big stage. It's just a matter of him, you know, right place, right time. And, and I sure hope he gets uh, another shot at the UFC. And in my opinion, you know, they cut him at three wins and four losses, which was too early. Same with Andrew Craig. Oh, yeah, and, and Daniel, it, it's, a, it's a weird thing. He's another guy who, if he took it as seriously as he could, I think he'd be even better. But Daniel's always been better than everybody. He's always just had that in his pocket. So he, I, I think he, he never really felt like he had to live the lifestyle you know yeah. what i mean and, and guys don't realize at this level all the guys who make it there are better than everybody yeah. and it's the guys yeah. who really commit to it that make it in the long term yeah and i'll tell you you know daniel's such a natural fighter but man his grappling is otherworldly it's, it's out of this world and i don't know how much like super technical training and drilling he's done in the past i don't know but man he just he can sub me and i'm a freaking four-year black belt dude's good I, i'm a big fan of the pit man i i can't wait to see him fight whether it's on a big stage or, or a local stage i'm with you he's fun 
you know, and as he sits in the corner of, of Chris Solis here. You know, Henson's another a staple. You know, been around fight, for a long time. Fine amateur, but years ago, been fighting pro for a couple years now. What a, what a fun, what a fun professional matchup here. You know, with our first pro fight of the night, we saw a really, really decorated grappler doing his thing as technically sound as can be. Both these guys moving well. Salise starting with some good crisp jabs. You know, Henson too, just kind of goes to show the difference between these pros knowing their tools. Henson seems to be looking for, for a big shot. You know, Henson actually covered range well with that right hand. And yeah, it was very impressive. Straight. That's not so easy to do. Not when that overhand right's an option. Take some discipline. Oh, oh wow. there's an overhand right into a into takedown. Into a takedown. You know, both, both scored. So now let's see if, if some of the el those elbows we were talking about earlier come into play, especially from a position like half guard, open guard, closed guard. I, I don't like him putting his arm under the head there because now he's taking away that option of the elbow. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, he could be looking to step over for a mounted guillotine. Oh, good job by Henson to not get reversed there. He doesn't have much of a base to that side, to his back side right now. Yeah, he doesn't want to give up that, that half guard sweep. You know, that's one thing with the hand being up in the neck, you, you can't post. And if, it looks like he's going for the guillotine. I can see Henson, he's, he's looking, oh. He got it, wow. My. Shows what I know. You know, and an arm in, top half guillotine. That's, a, that's something you don't see very often. You know, that must go to show you Henson's, you know, he knew it was in, I see he was going for it. I didn't think he'd get the tap. You know, he's got to be a strong, experienced grappler. The last last I heard, he was a purple belt, maybe a brown belt now, but, you know, showed really good awareness in that fight and got a quick finish. Grappling ruling the day so far on the uh, professional portion of this card. Two quick submissions. Yeah, any any jiu-jitsu gym owners can, can use this to, to sell their product. Gracie Baja Woodlands, right? <laughs> we have fantastic <laughs> jiu-jitsu there and good striking. Absolutely. I'm a striker at heart with a black belt just as a backup. One of the things that drives me crazy about I you. I know, I know. You know, and this is very much so my own personal thought process, but in, in my mind, uh, you know, a knockout is gold, a submission is silver, and a decision is bronze. And you know, in MMA, this is a high risk, high reward sport. I like going for the gold. I feel most complete when you when you put a guy to sleep with a punch. I get that, I've, and I've told you this before, a TKO is a different, a different animal, because there's times when a ref will stop a fight and then the guy puts his hands up like, really, you didn't let me keep going? Whereas when you submit a guy, there's no question. That guy has to make the conscious decision to quit, quit fighting yeah, you. That's true. And I, I feel like that's, if not equal to a knockout, it's very close. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I don't have a great rebuttal there, but there's just something about cracking a guy as hard as you can and watching him fall that is just so yeah. satisfying. <laughs> and and hard to come by too. You know, I am yet, that, 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 UFC knockout or TKO has is, is still eluded me as close as I got. And I'll tell you, that's like the main goal I have in life is to get a, a strike stoppage finish in the octagon. That's coming. It's I'm, coming. I'm fighting here soon. That's my main goal. And not to be not to be overwhelmed like I did in the past with the Jordan Mean fight. Try to knock him out too hard. I'm going to you know, have a little more restraint here. I, 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 thought, I thought you had it against Nico. I, I oh, thought that was. Uh, <laughs> so did I. That, that one felt like it was coming. 